Welcome to Across the Balkans. Great to have you with us on the show. I'm Nafis Alatic. Now, when someone mentions Balkan cuisine, what is the first dish that comes to your mind? It could be anything from burek, cevapi, dolma or baklava. People here in Istanbul, for example, often ask me about Bosnian burek. It's a type of pastry filled with meat and Bosnians are usually very proud of it, stressing burek can only be made with beef. Other countries in the region disagree though. But uh, what most of the Balkan national dishes have in common is they are all originally Turkish. As you know, the Ottomans had a strong influence over Balkan cuisine for centuries. But with time, each country has made their own modifications to the original recipe. So the debate over which cuisine is better still continues. In our special report, we take you to a famous Balkan restaurant here in Istanbul that makes some of the most delicious foods from the region. The Balkans has long been known for its diversity, a mix of different cultures, languages and religions. And nowhere is that more evident than its rich culinary history. You have to have the kebabi. Kebabi is what you're going to have, okay? Oh, don't they serve that in the cafe across the street? No! You cannot get the kebabi at the cafe across the street! What? What did I say? Across the street is Albanian. This cafe, Macedonia. Similar eating habits, ingredients, and cooking techniques created a mosaic of different but familiar Balkan dishes. And those differences play out when it comes to naming certain foods. Oftentimes, food has played an important role in uniting people with a shared history. I like to apologize for the behavior of my passion. Balkan cuisine, once part of the Roman, Byzantine, Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian empires sits at the crossroads of the ancient and the modern, of East and West. And that rich legacy has created an incredibly diverse cuisine. Here in Istanbul's district of Bayram Pasha, a little Balkan restaurant is living proof of this fusion. And his gamble has paid off. Many of the restaurant's patrons have Balkan origins and come regularly to get a little taste of home, just like Asla. Some just want to taste a new cuisine. Pita is potsacha, cevapi sa kaimakom, grah sa suhi mesom. Sogan dolma, baklava ruchna. The Ottoman touch is visible when the coffee drinking begins. It's very important for us because uh, we start our early morning with our traditional coffee, this coffee and this lokum. And there is still a dispute about which one is better. But it seems no matter where it's cooked or what it's called, those who try Balkan cuisine are always leaving impressed. To dive deeper into the similarities and differences of Balkan and Ottoman cuisines, Ozge Samanji is uh, with us here in the studio. Uh, she is the head of the Department of Gastronomy and Culinary Arts at Ozyan University. And from Sarajevo, we have a popular Bosnian chef, Nihad Memelegia. Welcome to Across the Balkans Boat. Uh, Ozge, uh, let me start with you. Is there such a thing as distinctively uh, Balkan cuisine? And what are the main characteristics uh, of this cuisine? It is not very easy to label, to define one Balkan cuisine unique, uh, because there are some differences, but there is also similarity. So we have to remember the Ottoman culinary heritage that we have in Balkan regions because more than 500 years the Ottoman presence brought some similar culinary techniques and taste in all Balkan regions, not only in Balkan regions, but in the rest of the Ottoman Empire, including Istanbul, Anatolia and the Middle East. So 
but of course, in today's Balkan uh, territories, um, each um, region has different characteristics, but we can talk about the presence of good quality of dairy products, for example. Uh, of course, the, um, the inherited pastry techniques, which is remarkably interesting and nice in Bosnia, in Bulgaria. I'm talking about burek, banista or in Greece, but in Turkey also, you know, it is burek. Uh, and also compared to the southeastern cuisine of Turkey, for example, Balkan cuisine is not very spicy. Uh, of course, there is paprika, but the story of paprika is different in Hungary. So <coughs> no use of sumac or red pepper. So the taste is much more natural. Uh, mm. Ozge, you mentioned burek. Burek in Turkey mm. and in Bosnia, uh, it's a very different dish, I must say, uh, as yes. a Bosnian. <laughs> uh, let me bring in Nihad um, here. When people mention Balkan food, they usually think, at least when it comes to Bosnian food, they usually think cevapis, burek, but uh, Bosnian cuisine is, is, is much more than that. Uh, yes, it's very interesting. Uh, this is about Bosnian cuisine. We have uh, very too much impact from uh, Ottoman cuisine, but also we have uh, impact for Austro-Hungarian and also for uh, Roman Empire uh, impact for our kitchen. And we have a very, very interesting uh, mix of this free cuisine. I think is the probably the most is Ottoman cuisine, and and uh, it's especially we we have this. Uh, a different religion and i can say we we we, we work more uh, uh, with the ottoman cuisine and we have now one specially taste you cannot find in the turkey or some somewhere else for this reason too many uh, turkish people when they tried the, our burek they said this is the best work in <laughs> in all the world uh. because the, we have this variety of people, of religion, and everything across too many people. I don't know, but I, I'm sure we. Yes, but we it's have true when you say thing. Bosnian burek, isn't it, uh, Ozge? It, it is famous in Istanbul also, but um, we shouldn't forget that when we are talking about Ottoman cuisine, inside the Ottoman cuisine, there are lots of culinary heritage from the past. Central Asian, Arab medieval, Byzantine, Selçuk. So it's a long period and there are some changes. So of course, when we are talking about Balkan cuisine, especially from the um, toward Hungary and Romania, we see also the influence of Austrian Hungarian Empire. Uh, in all of the Ottoman Empire, we see the presence of different religions, not only Islam, but also Christianity. And after the 15th century, the presence of the uh, Sephardic Jewish people, all of these uh, colors and different religious uh, rituals um, brought a very colorful and uh, multicultural culinary heritage to Ottoman Empire and also today to Turkey and also to Balkans. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and uh, uh, Nihad, the, the one thing that is interesting for the Balkan countries is that sometimes the same dish tastes completely different uh, in every other country. Yes, this is, uh, depends always uh, about culture. And we have too many different uh, in the kitchen also because the reason of the is the religion. You know, we, we, we don't use the, the, the pork and we, we have another for the, for the cooking. Uh, example, you, you can, especially Sarai, to cooking, we have the small portion, small sarma, small, uh, small this uh, klepa. In another part of the boss, you, you you can find the more bigger and uh, double double size of it. Uh, I I don't know why, but it's this is uh, different in the small country. We can find too too many. Uh, mm. uh, uh, Osge, can you answer that question? How through through history countries wanted to differentiate mm -hmm. a certain dish uh, because it, it becomes part of their identity? Yes, exactly. So this is the main uh, 
uh, problem or main thing. So, as you know, after the 19th century, with the rise of the nationalism, uh, Ottoman Empire, in Ottoman Empire also, we will see a dissolution. First Greece will, and then the rest. And as a result, as a natural result of the idea of nationalism, each young country or republic will try to define their identity within some limits, including their cuisine, their culinary culture. So once they want to define their culinary culture, uh, referring to the Ottoman past is not very reasonable, I understand. <laughs> so, to, but to create a national um, identity in every country will become important. For example, you know, the first cookbook published in Bulgaria was in 1871. The name of the book was Char Charigrad Cuisine. Charigrad is Istanbul because Istanbul, the capital city of the Ottoman Empire, was the uh, desired city in all over the empire uh, in terms of cuisine also. So, but after when we look to the cookbooks published in Bulgaria after um, 1880s, we see that the language will uh, change and the uh, Turkish connotation of the dishes will start to be left uh, behind and new one will be substituted them. And also we see a turn to Europe more, uh, a much more European style cuisine will dominate uh, the content of the cookbook. So this is the story. And that's why today, and also today, cuisine is a part of gastro diplomacy. It is an important source for gastro tourism. So that's why every country wants, uh, or even every city, <laughs> like in Turkey, wants to underline their special dishes. They want to define their own cuisine. But we can look from another way cuisine can unite also people. So I think it is a very good asset when we talk, if we talk about a kind of Ottoman culinary heritage in all over Balkans, including Turkey and Middle East, it can be something which unite different uh, cultures. Uh, Nihad, when you travel and work abroad, how much people do actually know about in your case, Bosnian cuisine, and what can Bosnia do to promote more its mm -hmm. food? I know people say um, that uh, there is a belief that you eat with your eyes. You can't say that for Bosnian food. I must say we are, we, uh, our food tastes better than it actually looks. But what mm -hmm. can we do? How can we promote it more uh, internationally and use it, as uh, Osge Hanum mentioned, for this gastro diplomacy? We, we, we always impress uh, with our lamp famous lamb from Yasta. I, I, I work too, too much with Italian, with Italian chefs, and I have one big friend, Gianluca Tomasi, actually is the, the, the coach of the Italian national culinary team. He's impressed of, uh, with our lamb. For him, is the, the best. Also the soup. Also the, our soup, we have very good uh, soup. Uh, for this uh, question, how we can promote in the future, this is uh, this is really a uh, hard question because because it's uh, not so easy. Uh, uh, I I make part of Italian slow food, slow food, and Italian do the best job. They protect all the name, all the technique, everything. You know, you cannot uh, the, now make the, the the pizza margarita somewhere. You must pay for this. You know. This is a very uh, serious uh, problem, and I, I think the, 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 the state, the government, must do this job. We, we do our, not, not enough. Uh, exactly, Osge, uh, how can, how, what do you think? Can Balkan food eventually uh, be, become more famous than it actually is now? For Turkish food, it's still, there are things wherever you go in the world, people will understand they're Turkish. For the Balkans, it's not the case. But how do you think we can we can promote our cuisines more? And what is the best way for people actually to get mm -hmm. to, to to get to be more interested in the Balkans in the Ottoman cuisine itself? First, uh, I think Balkans cuisine should uh, define or should find which kind of food items or dishes can be promoted abroad. So, um, Balkan people or 
chefs or uh, authorities in gastronomy may decide how uh, a, um, a shared Balkan cuisine can be promoted outside. And then, um, in real term, we have also a problem in Turkey. Although in the world, kebabs is known, but you know the story about baklava, for example. Uh, but uh, when, if we talk about Balkan cuisine, for example, some shared uh, dishes can be promoted abroad. Börek is one thing. It is so natural that every country has a different style. Even in Turkey, you know, we have more than 30 kinds of börek, but börek is the generic name. And I think it is a very important and it can be promoted. Baklava can be another uh, dessert. You, ha you have baklava, I Yes, think. of course. Because baklava it's just the size of our baklava is, is different, but, as we uh, have you mentioned. Know, uh, people, baklava in Bosnia is way bigger. Sometimes uh, we confuse. We, we, like, there is technique and there are some types. Baklava is a technique and under the label of baklava, it can be different size, different shapes, different stuffing. Even in Turkey, we have more than so. And also the quality of land and uh, sheep is good in Balkans. During the Ottoman Empire also, all of the sheep and lambs were imported to Istanbul from Balkans. Um, kaymak is another important thing. Kafi. Uh, uh, that's my actually <laughs> next think. question, coffee. <laughs> uh, Nihal, have you tried coffee uh, in, uh, in, in Istanbul, for example, Turkish coffee? Yes. yes. But do you agree yeah. with me that Bosnian coffee is better? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, it's. I think the way we prepare it is is different. Maybe and still traditional. So, uh -huh. Very traditional. Too many, too many young guys who, who make the coffee in the in the in the street. It for me it was uh, very 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 nice. Nice. They clean the street and make the coffee. For me, it's something really really good because uh, in in Bosnia you, you cannot find this. Uh, this these young people who who have this uh, this passion for the, for make uh, um, coffee, coffee and joy is served in, with coffee. jams. Uh, yes, our coffee is served with a little bit of sweets, and we also use it a little a bit of. It is a Ottoman tradition, you know. Yes, yes. In the Ottoman palace, in the Ottoman mansions, there was a tradition of coffee service. Coffee, with coffee, different jams, desserts, um, scents. Rose water. Yes, uh, as we have so a very, very nice. uh, similar way of serving coffee uh, in the Balkans as well. But the way we prepare it, it's is still very, very traditional, very nice. I must say. And, and maybe why that's why it tastes taste different uh, for you some people. Right, yes. Uh, thank you both for being our guests on Across the Balkans. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, any more time. But thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, your insights with us. Although food can play a powerful role in bringing countries together, it can also create political sore points. One example is plans by Italy to take Slovenia to court over balsamic vinegar. Relations between the two neighbors deteriorated in 2021 when Slovenia notified the European Commission of its plans to standardize its vinegar production. Italy claims Slovenia's move is a threat to the tradition of its Modena balsamic vinegar excellence and to a market worth more than $1 billion. Veljko Skenderia explains. After losing to Croatia in 2020 over exclusive rights to the Tehran wine label, Slovenia has found itself in another battle. It now faces neighboring Italy and this time over balsamic vinegar. Slovenia recently notified the European Commission of its plans to standardize its vinegar production. It proposed that any wine vinegar mixed with concentrated fruit juice or must should be enough to call it balsamic. But the protest was raised from across the border. Ta pravilnik je bil poslan kot tehnični predpis v notifikacijo Evropske komisije. V postopku notifikacije imajo vse države možnost dati ogovore oziroma pripombe. V tem postopku je dala ogovor Italija in Slovenija je na vse te pripombe Italija odgovorila, ter Evropska komisija potem ni več dala nobenega obveznega mnenja Sloveniji. Zato je bil v Sloveniji pravilnik oveljavljen. But then the diplomatic candidate started under the former Italian government under Mario Draghi. 
It announced that it would launch infringement proceedings against Slovenia to defend the authenticity of its own famous balsamic vinegar. And in Slovenia, this struck a sour note, to say the least. Kratka država Slovenija želi narediti red na, na, na področju kiso in to je interni pravilnik, eh, lokalna zakonodaja je to, ki se seveda mora notificirati pri Evropski komisiji, vendar to nikakor ne ogroža eh, balzamičnega kica. Italy, on the other hand, believes that Slovenia's move threatens its tradition of excellence in the production of balsamic vinegar from Modena but also, perhaps most importantly, a market worth approximately $1 billion. The term Aceto Balsamico di Modena, or Balsamic Vinegar of Modena, has been in place since 2009. It can only be used by producers in Modena and the Emilia-Romagna region. Slovenia argues it's not using the region's name, but just the term Balsamic, which is a generic term, meaning a bitter sweet taste. But under former Prime Minister Mario Draghi's government, the battle over balsamic vinegar became some sort of priority. It gave the public prosecutor the green light to start the process and even refer the case to the Court of Justice of the European Union. But Slovenian officials deny receiving any official complaint and say they actually found out about the whole case from the media. And for now, they cannot estimate the potential damage to Slovenian producers. Za enkrat nemamo nobenih projekcij zato ker niti ne vemo ali je sploh tožba vložena. V tem primeru pa menimo ker je že evropsko evropsko sodišče že odločilo v v določene zadeve in pa komisija da dejansko ni možno ni zaprečakovati da bi se daj odločilo drugače v primeru Slovenije kot je že odločilo v primeru ene druge države in je balzamični kis kot generično ime lahko se uporablja. This belief is based on a very similar court case from three years ago. In 2019, Italian producers lost their legal action to stop a German company from using the names Aceto or Balsamic Vinegar on its products. And the company was given the all clear to keep labeling its products as Deutscher Balsamico Vinegar or German Balsamico. As for Slovenia, it's home to the large industrial producer Natureta, as well as the Istenich family, one of the biggest traditional producers of balsamic vinegar in this part of the Balkans. So, we came here to a vineyard run by Istenich family, who are the largest producers of balsamic vinegar in Slovenia, to see how much a potential lawsuit could threaten their business. Istanić just waves his hand at the whole case. Što se tiče balzamičkog odsta smo mi baš radimo skoro isključivo u Sloveniji kao prvo. Kao drugo, ja mislim da ako će oni sa time uspjet, mi se nećemo baš puno oko toga protivit. Jer ima i drugih lepih znači mogućnosti na koji način se to prezentira jer mi materija se neće mijenjati. They have been producing aceto for decades. There are two types, one that matures in six years and is used as a luxury salad vinegar, and the other whose maturation time is between 12 to 15 years, and which is a true gourmet delicacy. Za sada nam to pravi samo reklamu. Sada je ono reklamu koju nikad ne bi inače dobili, <laughs> sad i imamo jer nema baš puno proizvođača ni na ovom području Balkana koji bi to proizvodili, pa sad to pri, privuče pozornost. The Istenić family produces 3000 bottles of cheaper aceto vinegar and just 500 bottles of premium products per year. Given the small amount, they find it amusing that this dispute has even arisen. However, Aleš Kuhar warns that Italy's new right-wing government will hardly think it's a laughing matter. Ta vlada, ki prihaja, se močno zauzema za neke nacionalne vrednote, a s tem lahko motivira volil, ki jaz ne vem. So pa to seveda, bazamični kis, predvsem ta modenski, to je vrh kulinarike italijanske in gastronomije, Tudi, da razumem, da je tukaj možno motivirati pa malo volivce, v bistvu, ne, ustražiti oziroma jih mobilizirati. 
Italy says defending its cuisine and domestic products is a priority from what it calls illegal attacks. And while this may be reasonable from a national and economic point of view, not many outside of the country make sense as to why Italy insists on this particular case, especially given its similar lawsuit against Germany ended in defeat. But regardless of the outcome, which may not be decided for years, Slovenian producers say they will keep making their balsamic vinegar under one name or the other without much sour grapes. Veliko Skanderija, TRT World, Ljubljana, Slovenia. That's it for this week. Hope you enjoyed our program. See you next time from me and the whole team here in Istanbul. Bye-bye for now.